Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. It is just another exciting time to really come together, especially in what we're calling game time. Man, game time 2022 is off to a start. We love this season. I love the season of game time. I like this changing of the trees, you know, just kind of this changing from summer to fall. And Dallas is miserably hot in August and even into September, and now it's getting a little cooler. And man, I tell you what, it's just nice to see this kind of changing of the season. And for us, this is what we call AP, which is Medicare enrollment season. It's also the most important time of year for the life insurance business, our annuity business, and our wealth business for everybody to really finish strong. And so we have game time to really just get people excited and have fun while working hard. And I absolutely love the amazing energy our team is showing this game time. Last week, we announced our first activity challenge. And it's been incredible to see how all of you have stepped up. I also want to tell you, watch for our end zone celebration highlight video coming out in the next few days. Man, I'm excited for you guys to see all the creativity of all your teammates coming together. And we'll also be announcing our next activity challenge this coming Friday. So be sure to be on the lookout with all your emails for all of those details. You should also be receiving, or you should have already received your first swag item, our Integrity branded can koozies. I hope you enjoy those. Put something refreshing in those this game time. And be sure to watch out for the gold coins that we've hidden in some of the swag. Anyone who finds a gold coin will get an extra, extra special prize. And be sure to tell your team captain if you find one, If you find one, you won't miss it because they are super cool and very treasured here among the Integrity family. We also announced that we have this kind of special keyword. We called it the Hail Mary. And the Hail Mary kind of happens once a game or maybe twice a game at the end of the half. And you're just kind of throwing it up for grabs. But with Integrity, as much as we score out on the field, we decided to change this to touchdown because we score so much and having so much fun that we decided to change that kind of whole idea to touchdown. And today's special word, this touchdown keyword, is laces out. Laces out. So make sure that you go into integritymarketing.com slash game time and input the keyword laces out. I guess that's two words, keywords, laces out for a chance to win an extra special prize. And it's been fun to see all of our offices come together and really pushing hard this fourth quarter, man. We've got so much momentum going into this fourth quarter. We had an amazing August, great September. We've got going into this October AP and all of our life businesses are just crushing it. Annuities are never seen this type of volume. And we are super excited to see not only what we accomplish in the fourth quarter through game time, but how that also sets us up for 2023 as well. And I do believe with all of us coming together, we are just getting started. Now, we have another exciting announcement coming to you today. And this is one that we've been partnering with and working with for a long time. And listen, I, it's one of those things as you kind of get to know people and become friends with people, man, you start really looking for ways that how can we do more together just because we're so aligned in so many ways. And so I'm incredibly excited that my buddy Jordan Smith and Elevation Sales Coaching has joined the Integrity family. Jordan will also become a managing partner here at Integrity. And Elevation Sales Coaching is based out of Lake Forest, North Carolina, and has a network of more than a thousand licensed insurance agents serving the senior market, primarily with their final expense, life insurance, Medicare, and annuity products. Jordan was also an owner at North American Senior Benefits with Chad Milner and Craig Harvey and and the rest of the incredible guys there whenever they first came on as partners here at Integrity in 2019. So he's been part of the Integrity family this entire time, but now 
as he's added his business into the Integrity family with Elevation Sales Coaching, this is an incredible opportunity for us to take it to the next level, truly. Jordan is just an incredible guy and incredible leader in this business with this young, dynamic, incredibly successful group. And this new partnership will give Jordan and his team even more opportunity to drive outsized results and grow even faster into the future. And so I have the tremendous pleasure and honor to welcome Jordan Smith as our newest managing partner here at the Integrity Family. Jordan, congratulations, my friend. I'm so excited to have you. Mr. Brian Adams, man, I am just very excited for this day indeed. Just extremely excited, all of us at Elevation and and North American Senior Benefits. We've been waiting for this day and excited to be partnering yet again with you, Brian, but also the whole Integrity family. And your passion's contagious. I just love that. And look, we've been working on this for a long time, especially, you know, you went through the whole process with us with NASB, which was a great process. So proud of our partnership with NASB. What you guys have been able to create is just an amazing business with Chad Milner and Craig and and the entire team. I mean, talk about just an amazing, dynamic, sharp team that you guys have put together. And so being able to really come together completely here is even a more special day. Uh, now, you've been hearing these Inspire podcasts for a long time. I mean, and we've had some remarkable people on this podcast. And so I'm super excited to add you to that list. But as you might know, we have this little thing that we ask our new partners to sing a song. You can pick any song you want just kind of break the ice so i thought we'd just kind of start with that what would you like to sing for us <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you guys want to hear my singing voice we, we just came off our national conference and it was funny i lost my voice and i, I think you might have some people quit i had to sing you got like a smoker thing happening kendall didn't you sing a song kind of with a, a bit of a growl one day kind of like that i can't remember What's the song? <laughs> oh man, yeah, we were. <laughs> I can't remember the song. But you're, you're right. There's it's some you sort remember of a, that? A rock so artist. Fun. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> so, so Jordan and I was at Limer Conference last week. So, Limer is a massive organization. Had about 800 senior executives from insurance companies. So it's primarily insurance company led. And so every big name insurance company there, all their CEOs, their you know, chief marketing officers or head of sales. And they asked me to speak on a panel about kind of the future of the industry. And so I was up there with some really remarkable people. I mean, some, some you know, chairman, CEO of some really big companies. So we're in the back in the green room. And I got to tell you, man, these are really successful people. There were five of us on this panel. Well, there were four of us on the panel and moderator. And so we're, <laughs> we're like hanging out for like 20, 30 minutes before. And we needed to break the ice. So the walk-up music, they had walk-up music, which was Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby, right? And so I told them, I said, somebody's got to sing. Like, like as we walk up, I mean, there's 800 people in the room. Michelle Obama follows us on out of this deal. So there are people who are locked in on this deal. I was like, it was too stuffy. I was like, somebody's got to break the ice. And so I said, I'll give $1,000 to anybody who gets up on stage and sings. And they're all, I mean, these are pretty high. High for living people. I, they were like $1,000 and I was going to cut it. And so I said, I'll give you $10,000 your favorite charity. Any one of y'all. Nobody would do it. So we get up. Sure enough, walk up music. Everybody, I mean, that's a kind of a, must be on a stuffy room. You walk up and they play Ice Ice Baby getting up there. Well, I'd met Vanilla Ice or AKA Rob Van Winkle at one of our partners, Andy Albright's event. And so I'm like, somebody's got to sing this. And so, the moderator says, Brian Adams was in the back trying to get us to all loosen up. And he said um, he would donate $10,000 to our favorite charity if anyone would sing this song. What do you think? Should we have him sing it? And they turn it on me. And I'm like, I'm not backing down. And so I got up there and I was like, stop, collaborate and listen. I was back with my brand new invention. Something grabbed a hold of me tightly. I just owned it. And so I'm going to give $10,000 out of my own pocket to the uh, Life Happens charity. It's a, it's a charity to really help uh, people realize the importance of life insurance and understand why people need to buy life insurance. I, got to, I just had to tell you, man, um, I've, I've never been put on the spot like I just put you on the spot that much, but I, I was on the stage 
and I wasn't going to back down. So there you have it. It was super fun. You would have been proud of me because I know you like Vanilla Ice. <laughs> I just think it's funny that you, you met Vanilla Ice at one of Andy Albright's events. Hey, you know what's funny? So we meet Vanilla Ice, and so we're kind of backstage, and I go, hey, um, so what do I call you? And he goes, Rob. <laughs> he goes, I, I was Vanilla Ice when I was 19, but you can call me Rob. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> my boy Rob, he, we actually, he's one of the coolest dudes, very laid back. Um, and by the way, we ended up with having a great session at Lumber. It was an incredible group. I'm so proud to be part of that as well. I, I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. Hey, man, listen, we are super, super excited to be your partner. And I know that you got started in this business kind of in a unique way. And a lot of people know all about NASB. All of our partners have heard about NASB, North American Senior Benefits, and, and what you and Craig and Chad and the team have been building. But tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this business and how this all came about for you. Yeah, you know, Brad, I, I really appreciate the honor. I think I kind of lucked my way into this business. I grew up in a final expense neighborhood, a single parent household. And, you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything, by the way. I think that oftentimes I was the only one of my race in my friend group or in my neighborhood. And I think that taught me a lot about different people and, and being able to, you know, just adapt to whatever surroundings I'm in and ended up just high school educated. I think I was always a little entrepreneurial wasn't really, really effective at any of those skills, but I was always wanting to buy something and, and resell it, be it sporting cards or ad pack newspapers. I mean, I was always doing things like that. And so, you know, I made decent <laughs> grades, not great grades, but my, my parents thought it was weird that I didn't want to go to college. My dad literally worked for Duke. We hate Duke. We're big UNC fans, but he worked for Duke. He audited them. And because he worked for him, we got like 75% off any private school in North Carolina. Now, there's a great, lot of great schools here in Wake Forest. Elon, Davidson, I mean, some Duke, some great schools. And so he just could not believe. My dad was like, got more degrees than a thermometer. He's still, he's like 70 and still trying to pursue more degrees. And he's been, you know, fairly successful in his own right. But when I decided not to go to college, like, he couldn't believe it. And truth be told, I just was late on applying for scholarships and financial aid. We didn't have the money really to pay for it. So I was like, my plan was, let me take a year off. Let me, you know, make some money, apply. I was kind of a procrastinator, and I'll take a year off. Well, I got into sales during that year, and I sucked at sales. I was horrible at it. I remember trying to sell knives. Never made one sale. I remember slicing my finger, like, just bleeding profusely in the middle of the presentation. I had to have stitches, basically, and, and the lady felt sorry for me. Still didn't buy. That's how bad of a sale you I was. Buy. I oh, my God. Somebody... <laughs> Could you still didn't sale. buy? Serious. Oh, my God. Yeah, did not buy. Never made a sale. And I, I probably bought one, okay, because I buy what I sell, but I don't think I got anybody else to buy. And I kept trying different things like that. Tried to sell home improvement, was awful at it, but there was something about it. Like I, I wanted to stay in sales and it didn't really start to change. I got married at a young age at 22, my wife's 21. And then I finally was kind of forced to mature because my wife came from a poor background too. So like it was up to us. We weren't getting any handouts and that forced me to mature. I found my niche in, believe it or not, newspaper sales of all things and ended up being the top salesperson in the, in the market. Then I would go to different cities. I mean, all you name the big newspaper, I probably worked for them. I'd go into the city, train the salespeople. I'd sell myself. And, I mean, we, we would be sitting there. Most people think when I say that, we sold, like, advertising. No, I was the guy, like, in a grocery store at a kiosk trying to get you to stop. And this is, like, right when all the newspapers started giving their stuff for free online. Okay, and this is during the financial crisis, too, of 07, 08, 09 which a newspaper was just like the last thing somebody was going to pay for when, when times were tight. Then I started having kids. I had my first daughter in 2010 and my second daughter, Brooklyn, in 2011. And the problem was I was having to travel to, to work, and it was like few and far between opportunities. So I might have to go to Dallas for a week. Then I might have nothing available for a week. Then I go to Minneapolis for a week, and that was cool for a while, but it, you know, it wasn't like I was crushing it financially and having to travel with kids just wasn't going to be cool long term. So I started looking, what can I do? And to not only make more money, but to be able to be at home and control my hours. And I kept meeting people like in real estate, mortgage brokers, different things. But I, I kept meeting people in insurance that were telling me they were banking money. And I just never listened, never believed them. Finally met a guy. I was pushing my daughter on a swing. I always remember this. And just making small talk with the guy next to me. And I said, what do you do? And he said, I do insurance for seniors. And I said, well, how do you like it? And he goes, well, 
I make 20K a month, and I work 20 hours a week. And that was the only thing I remember from that conversation. I lost the guy's number, so I ended up getting my life, health, property, and casualty license online while I was running my business and didn't even know who I was going to work with. Didn't make a single sale, but I had all four licenses. I was proud of those four licenses, but I never you know, never used most of them. And unfortunately, met a company that trained me up on final expense. Uh, really fortunately, and I'm in, forever indebted and, and grateful for finding Chad Milner and Craig Harvey and just extremely appreciative and grateful for that partnership the last 10 years and the support they've given, a partnership, a friendship, and really their vision three years ago that they had to partner with Integrity when I didn't even – I was clueless. I was just running my race, and you know, uh, Chad and Craig uh, brought integrity into the light. Man, that's such a great story. You know, this this industry is such an. I, I was I was at this conference one more, and we were talking about just the opportunity in this industry and how much people need us, and not just our clients that we serve, but also the advisors that we serve. They need this opportunity. They need the plans that we're able to develop and, and offer. And so you're just kind of an example of that. And look, I know that a lot of our partners have trouble whenever they get into this business. I mean, this has never been an easy business to get into. And a lot of people have a lot of challenges. I remember those dark days, man, when I'm sitting there thinking like, am I ever going to make it? And should I, should I start waiting tables? That was kind of my... I always knew we would get through it, but I was always wondering, man, should I go wait tables at night just to make ends meet? Because you, know, you believe in the future, you believe in what you're doing, how you're serving people, but man, it's a, it's a tough thing before you have that success. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome, kind of those dark nights when you're sitting there going, man, is this really going to happen for me? Yeah, well, you know, like most people, I wanted to, to have my wife stay at home. The problem with that was like most people wait until you have a child. As soon as she found out she was pregnant, she quit. So like, you know, we had no savings at that time, you know, no money. I remember one time a guy kind of pulled into to my car. He changed lanes into me, and it was my, my back driver's side door. I had no car insurance. Okay? I couldn't afford it. And I'm in sales. And I, like, I was dumb enough to just drive around like that for years, <laughs> for years not fixing the door. And like you, know, you have a ride along in the car, and you can't open the back you know, the back door, like, dude, get out, get on the other side. So finances were definitely a struggle for quite some time. The biggest challenge I had was that I was like a lot of people, I think, I was deathly afraid of public speaking. Like I remember mm -hmm. in school, I would rather take an F on a project than have to present in front of the school. And so getting mm -hmm. into sales like was horrible. That If you had to list all my skill sets, that was like by far at the bottom of any of them. Even in a one-on-one -on -one communication situation, I think I really had to work on that. I know I did. And then when it came to speaking, you know, in, on stages and training different people, some of the, what helped on that is when I started with North American Senior Benefits, I think I was like the only agent in North Carolina. And at first, it seemed like a negative, like, man, I don't, you know, is there anybody I can ride with? No. Is there anybody making good money I can learn from? No, not yet. Is there any, like, I didn't have that. So I had to take that ownership myself. So it kind of sucked maybe for a few months, but then it greatly affected my, my career because I had to step into those roles, right? Because they weren't provided. Yeah. So I think that was a struggle that, that helped me too, Brian. Man, there's a lot of a lot of those examples that we've all gone through, but I think that's what helps shape you to kind of being who you are today and kind of overcoming those fears. Today, you're one of the greatest presenters and public speakers that I've seen. And so it's really encouraging to see how you, you can step into that fear and overcome it. What do you feel has helped set your business apart and enabled you to succeed the most? Because you built an incredible business. I don't, I don't know if people realize the size and scale of the business that you've built. It is truly remarkable what you guys and your team have put together. What do you think set y'all apart and enabled you to do that? Yeah, good question. I think number one is finding and following success. So like when I was a new agent, I, I was in the insurance business for about a year. I felt like I learned how to sell insurance I was number one personal production in that company. So, you know, anything that you're going to do, I think you got to do it at a high level before you can train it. But I heard about this guy, Craig Harvey, never even met him. So I joke with Craig sometimes that his biggest recruit to this day so far, like, like I had, I found him and sought him out after him. So I heard he'd been the top personal production. <laughs> you recruited I, I him. He'd been you recruited him. Owner. Yeah. I, yeah. And it caused a big fight actually for a while between like Brian McCann, John Kite and Craig Harvey. But I called the company they were at the time, and, and I wanted to work with Craig because I'd heard of them. No offense to those guys. I didn't know who they were. 
anyway, so finding and then following success, I think Craig and I kind of did that as well, finding the Milner Group and Chad Milner and what he had been able to do in his family. And that's the same thing that NASB did when they found you to take the leadership to the next level and the whole Integrity family. So that would be one. And then two would just be consistent, small decisions. Like one thing that motivates my team, I think, is when they see me and I like this, their thought is, man, if Jordan could do this, good God, I'm going to crush this. Like, and I want them to think that because <laughs> they can. They can, absolutely. But so it's, so it's no one talent. Like, I, I don't have much, many skills. I don't have many talents. But one thing that I do have is I've been able to make consistent, small decisions daily. When the truth is, I'm kind of lazy at heart. I'm kind of a procrastinator. I'm lazy. But if I get into a routine, like if I get into a rhythm, it then just becomes second nature. So what's helped me in business is the consistency. I always tell our team consistency compounds. I think you did a talk recently on compounding interest, like the eighth wonder of the world. Well, one of the only things to me more lucrative than that is compounding consistency. The small daily Mm. decisions done right, done well over time, successful people, you know, do consistently what average people do occasionally or when they feel like it. And I think that's been a big accelerator for us. Was that a Zig Ziglar quote that you just made? I think Zig 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 talked a lot. I mean, I read him a lot. Yeah, Zig talked about that a lot. I, I, I did too. I've, I've got a lot of his knowledge in my head, but I don't remember all the, the details. But, but I think that there's so much truth to that. Like just the little things, doing it every day the same way. And sometimes it can be monotonous and boring, but that's what sometimes really pays off is being that really consistent, focused individual that can overcome anything. I think there's just so much truth to that. Look, you've been part of the Integrity family for a while with Craig and Chad and the team. You've had your own business here on the side, and you were a partner at NASB. Tell us, what caused you to say, listen, I want to jump into the Integrity, you know, head first, however you want to say it at this point. Well, first off, who wouldn't want to be part of this all-star team? I did not have a very good athletic career by any means. Okay, but one of the things I was most proud of is when you get a call growing up that you made an all-star team. And I, I feel like in the insurance business, obviously, this is the all-star team. And so being able to kind of have your name in, in that circle, with me, it was a very easy decision because we've been partnering with you guys for three years. So I've been able to watch the integrity effect firsthand right in front of my eyes. Mm-hmm. One of my concerns up front was, hey, we've grown every single year. Does this partnership three years ago, you know, is this going to change anything? And if anything, we've actually accelerated our growth. So the first yeah. year was 2020. We had just partnered late 2019. We had a, a yeah. good first quarter, and then COVID hits, and it punched us in the mouth for a month. And May, we ran a sales stimulus, you know, not from the government, not getting our agents to wait for government money, but we wanted to provide a stimulus for them. And then from June on, we had huge growth. It was one of our biggest years up, almost 50% growth in 2020. And I don't think we would have done that had we not made that partnership with Integrity right before that year. Then up again 21, up again this year. So I do see it as an all-star team. I do see it as expanding our leadership. I don't think there's a better leader in the industry than you, Brian. I'm not saying that just because you're on the call. I tell people that in closed doors after knowing you for three years and seeing what you've done. To me, it's an accelerant, this partnership, and a stabilizer at the same time. There's resources that you guys provide to help grow our business at a faster clip than we have been. But at the same time, being partnered with such a big organization, it adds a stabilizing factor. And those are some of the reasons I'm really excited today. Man, first of all, I appreciate that. And I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think, you know, by coming together, we've been able to all accomplish more. And that COVID experience that we all went through together really proved that out in so many different ways. Now, I think that there's power in names. Whenever we named Integrity Integrity, there was a reason for that. I mean, we wanted people to hold us accountable to that word. And we want people to recognize that word because it has power, for sure. You named your company Elevation Sales Coach, and tell us about why you named it that and and what it stands for. Yeah, so Elevation, there's a church that inspires me out of North Carolina, Stephen Furtick's Church Elevation. By the Uh, way, some of the most amazing music comes out of that church. I'm I'm a huge fan of that church, I just want to say personally, and I love their music. If anybody wants some inspiring music, listen to Elevation Worship. They have some amazing, amazing music. Yeah, and so their church kind of came on the scene right when I got into insurance. I mean, they probably launched a few years before we did. A lot of our agents attend their churches. They're big in North Carolina. They were one of the pioneers of multi-site, kind of, so there's some similarities. And 
Stephen Furtick's the big inspiration for me. So elevation when it came time, and, and by the way, I'm a big North American senior benefits guy, so we always brand to the bigger entity. But you know, for, it started as just for tax purposes. You know, you got to name your corporation. So elevation, we're all about elevating the agent, the agent experience, the agent's life, their income. And then at the end of the day, what do we do? We, you know, at least from from my standpoint, where my role is, it's to coach salespeople. And I always wanted to be a coach. Like the, if you asked me growing up, the only thing I ever wanted to do was to coach. Now, athletically, I wasn't gifted enough to get to upper levels. And I do believe you need to perform at a high level to be able to coach something. So I didn't really want the life of a middle school, high school coach. So then when I got into sales and eventually got good at it, I thought, huh, if I can do something, I can coach people how to do it. I believe that coaches always can get more out of somebody than they can themselves. You look at the best athletes in the world. I mean, Michael Jordan always credited his college coaches at UNC, Dean Smith, Roy Williams. Then he had a personal coach. Like outside of his NBA coach, Phil Jackson, he hired Tim Grover and had personal coaches. I heard a real funny story Phil Jackson told this week. Brian, I'll kick it back to you. So Phil was talking about MJ's last ever game against the Utah Jazz as a Chicago Bull. And a lot of people remember the last shot because he stood there and held his follow through. Mm, That was memorable. What Phil Jackson told, though, was kind of unique. He said, if you remember the series before, we actually were down by three. And he said, MJ scored. He then stripped the ball from Carl Malone, who was the MVP that year. And then he hit the game winner. What was wild about that, though, Phil said in the last timeout, he said, I told them what play. He said, I told Michael what play they're going to run. And he said, I want you to peel off a horn a sec and come strip Malone from behind. He didn't say, we only have one timeout. So I'd rather you not use it. Don't let them you set their defense. And then he said, hey, Mike, you're shooting a little bit short. Make sure you follow through. Now, maybe Phil in his old age is just starting to take all the credit for MJ. But if that's true, who knows? The three main plays to end that game, Phil says he told them in the timeout, the power of coaching. Power of coaching. And there's kind of a, a bit of a, you know, I, I got to be careful how I say this, but Here's to you, Phil, but just holding that follow through for, for so long, like did I follow through, bro? That is awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. Hey, so we code name every one of our partnerships whenever we're working on a deal for confidentiality sake. And this was code named Brooklyn. And it's an interesting name. We create a piece of art for every one of our partnerships. We have a, some amazing artists that do these woodcuts that you've seen that we do for each one of our partnerships. And yours was codenamed Brooklyn. Tell us about why it was. Yeah, and first off, when I heard you describe your sons, Asher, and, and your other son, it escapes me. As Shiloh, name. yeah. It Shiloh, made me think, yeah. Shiloh, yeah, and it made me think, God, I, I probably didn't put as much time and thought into my child's name as I should have. So, so my first daughter is Bella Faith Smith, my uh-huh. second daughter, Brooklyn Grace Smith, and then my son's Beckett, Cannon Smith. I want to go with Cannon. My wife went out with the B names for Beckett. But Brooklyn and I have always had this just special relationship. If you ask her, she always says, like, who's your best friend? She'll say, Daddy. And she's probably the most like me, definitely, from a personality standpoint. But the month I got license and insurance, she was due. I did it in large part because I knew she was coming and we weren't making enough money. I wanted to be home. And she's become this just phenomenal person, but also championship rider. She won the state championship last year in North Carolina, horseback rider. I think she was nine, competing in 12 and under. And this year she was out in nationals in in Louisville, Kentucky. We were competing right when, you know, this partnership was was getting ready to close. And we were out there at the national championships. Her birthday was coming up. It marked 10 years from the day we started with North American Senior Benefits. There was just a lot of, you know, comparisons there. And I also think back to where we kind of got started with North American Senior Benefits and Integrity was the New York City Monday Night Football game where we caught the chopper over from Brooklyn to, (laughs) to the game. And so, just a special name to me when I when I think in terms of integrity and fond memories. That is such a cool, cool story behind that name. I can't wait to see what our artist comes up with for that. You have to work with him on that and, and we'll need to we need to tie in Brooklyn into that as well. Maybe your other kids. That's super, super cool. Well, hey Jordan, we're so proud to be your partner. We think that there's just the sky's the limit of what we're creating here at Integrity. We truly truly believe we're just getting started. And I've been saying that for a while. I remember whenever we first met in 2019, I truly thought we were just getting started then. But I'm more excited now. I mean, we've worked out a lot of the different pieces of kind of what we're building here and I truly believe kind of the sky's the limit. And so I wanted to have 
my good friend, Chad Milner, be the first one to welcome you as the newest managing partner here at Integrity. Chad, are you there with us, man? Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. And Jordan, I just want to say how special it is to be able to congratulate you on what we've called for 10 years, our path to prosperity within NASB. And now that next level of becoming an Integrity partner, I couldn't be more proud of you. You know, Brian, there's a lot of people in Integrity that are very successful, but something that really separates Jordan, I think, from some other partners, it's not just his work ethic, it's not just his incredible sales ability, but it's his ability to take a a very tough situation. Sometimes people get very emotional, and in sales, you know, there's going to be some really tough situations, some tough decisions to be made. Jordan's emotional intelligence is amazing. He is such an incredible person when it comes to dealing with tough situations. If you're in the middle of a fight, whatever it is, you're losing an agent or something just bad happening, and it's going to happen. Jordan's ability to just stay calm, think very rationally, and always be positive has just been such a big reason for our success. Jordan, I'm so proud of you. I'm so thankful for you being part of our life for the last 10 years, and I'm really looking forward to another, you know, another 10 years or more with you at the integrity level with you as a partner. Congratulations, buddy. So proud of you. Man, thanks so much, Chad. Really appreciate you jumping on today, man. I know that means a lot to you, Jordan. You know, having Chad and, and his family and everything that they've done, I know has been true impactful for you. Yeah, very, very humbled. Thank you, Chad, for the kind words. Thank you for your leadership, your vision to start North American Senior Benefits, to then partner with Integrity. Man, very humbling day. Thank you, sir. We also have another incredible partner who's joined us today. It's Mr. Craig Harvey. Craig, are you there? Hey, Brian. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, brother. It's a pleasure to be on and to just say a few kind words about my little brother. Brian, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Jordan, can you believe 10 years? Going on 11 years now, man, that we've been in this sales foxhole together. I got to be honest, dude. I'm not surprised. You are a rare talent. God did not make many Jordan Smiths. I've been saying that for years. And I think like my good friend and partner, Chad, said, we wouldn't be here without you. You've been a great friend to me. You know, Brian, I'm getting a little older now, bro. I, I know I don't look at Jordan, but I'm getting a little older. And I start looking at these young kids, you know, like Jordan in his early 30s, doing some of the things that he's done. And you do feel like a big brother, a father figure of sorts. I mean, I've always tried to put these guys' success congruent or equivalent with my own. You were talking about Zig Ziglar earlier. If you make enough people or if you help enough people get what they want, it's going to lead you to what you want. I'm just so proud of him. I really am. My heart is just full as he's kind of ringing this bell. He's kind of putting this Hall of Fame jacket on and it's not elevation anymore. It's not just ASB anymore, but to get that integrity jersey, brother, nobody deserves it more. I love you and I'm thankful for you. Thank you, man. Uh, Okay, Craig's always been a big brother to me. You know, I, I grew up really not close to my dad and Craig was a financial father figure to me, but then it grew a lot more than that. So I love you, man. Thank you, Craig. And and the best selling author of Driven. Let's give him a shout out for Driven. If you haven't read the book Driven, you gotta read that as well. How about that there, Craig? Well, that Brian, I think because you wrote a forward to it, sir, is is what <laughs> yeah. has contributed to so many of the sales that we have made. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah, given right. you your royalties yet. I haven't given you your royalties yet, yeah, but thank right. you for that. I, I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm just proud I've got a signed copy here on my desk. Well, Jordan, this is a huge day, man. We're super excited to announce this partnership. We're so proud to partner deeper with you and Chad and Craig and the rest of the North American Senior Benefit family. This is such a special day for all of us, and we're proud to be your partner. We think that we truly are just getting started with a partnership like this. We appreciate you sharing your story, your inspiration, your passion, and can't wait to see what we can accomplish today together. It's going to be an incredible opportunity. So this is the time we get to really show how good we can become. And so congratulations, my friend. I'm super proud to be your partner and I can't wait to see where it goes from here, Bond. Thank you, man. Likewise. Thank you so much, Brian. All right, man. Thanks for everybody for joining us today. This has been a lot of fun and can't wait to continue this journey with all of you guys. Hope everybody has an amazing day. Hope everybody really has fun with game time and all that we're doing as we serve more Americans together. God bless you all. Take care and have a great day.